Next item on our agenda is the face-to-face -face art project. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. At last week's town meeting, the artist JR was introduced as background to the proposed face-to-face -face art project. At that time, uh, we believe that there may have been some misunderstanding on the specific specifics of the proposed project in Southfield. Thus, uh, we requested an opportunity tonight to present the details of this project to the City Council for further consideration. So a little bit of background, TED is an acronym for Technology, Entertainment and Design Conference, is held annually and brings thousands of people together from these three interests to have a dialogue on science, business, art, and global issues <coughs> facing the world. The TED Prize is designed to leverage the TED community exceptional array of talent and resources. It is awarded annually to an exceptional individual who receives approximately $100,000 and much more important, one wish to change the world. The TED Prize 2011 winner is artist JR and his global art exhibit titled Inside Out. We saw a little introduction on the artist last week. <coughs> now, JR's wish is to challenge communities to change the world through art. He is sharing a portion of his prize with the city of Southfield to support an outdoor exhibit. The outdoor exhibit <coughs> in Southfield will transform student photos of personal identity into pieces of community artwork. Specifically, Southfield's face-to-face -face art project is black and white photographic portraits of Southfield students, which will be enlarged to 53 inches tall by 35 inches wide um, paper posters. These posters will be mounted like wallpaper on marine gray plywood and installed approximately every 35 feet, hopefully along the front, of, front lawn of City Hall, from Civic Center Drive to the library entrance and various other locations throughout the community. I'd like to share uh, some examples of the scale of these of these proposed um, posters, and then I'll continue with my presentation. Photographic portraits will be temporarily displayed as outdoor gallery starting on Saturday, June 4th, and will be removed at the end of the month. Now, one of the concerns that I heard from council is that um, this not be just a, a public school project. And if we have reached out to Yeshiva Beth Yuda and Akiva Hebrew Day School, both have responded today positively. They want to partner and they would like to offer some of the photos of their children from their, their schools to be part of this display. What uh, we are proposing <coughs> on behalf of the city center and requesting that the city, city council support is the following. Permission to install approximately 20 to 30 of these art pieces on um, the front lawn for approximately four weeks. Minimal support by Parks and Recreation and Streets and Highway <coughs> for the installation of the frames and supervision of the events, and public relations support for promoting the project. We believe that this unique project will generate a positive dialogue in the community, attract visitors, and give us a platform to celebrate our future, the future of our children, the future of the city, with the media. I took this uh, photo with the scale images of the children out in the front lawn so you get an idea of the scale and, and proposed placing, placement of these, of these uh, photographs. And we're proposing to locate them 10 feet off the sidewalk uh, in between the row of trees, approximately 30 or 35 feet apart. And um, from <laughs> Civic Center Drive to approximately where the library entrances to the north, we could, we could accommodate between 20 and 25 of these posters. Now the remaining um, images 
would be located at school sites and other businesses that uh, want to participate throughout the community. So tonight what we're asking the council to consider, one, is to give us permission to participate as a community in this joint project, two, provide some technical support by Parks and Rec and the Highway Department for the installation of the frames, and three, um, to work closely with the um, school teachers to promote this in a positive way for the city of Southfield. And I have some uh, handouts for the council for further consideration. Two of our teachers are here if you have any specific questions, and I'd be happy to field any questions the council may have at this time. Okay. Do you have any questions? Ms. Gerst. Um, could you repeat again where this time you're planning on, where you'd like to put the uh, display? Because last time we were here, you said up and down Civic Center, up and down Evergreen. And that was one of our concerns that we thought it needed, to, or at least for mine, that if it was done, that it needed to be done on a smaller scale. So, um, hearing your concerns, and uh -huh. just knowing logistically that to, to try to create a hundred um, frames in a short time period, it would be very difficult. In time. We wanted to participate. The city center advisory board and the businesses were very excited about participating. So what we scaled this project back to have 20 to 30 of these located on the front lawn of City Hall from Civic Center Drive to the entrance of the library. And, and that would be the city's contribution to this project. Other, um, other posters might um, be displayed on private property at other school sites and, and other uh, community venues throughout the community. But in order to have, I believe, an impact, we need a synergy of, of these located in a small area uh, and accommodating traffic safety and other concerns that the council raised. Okay, I just have three parts to my point. Um, three questions. Second question. Have, um, have you guys talked to the police department about the distraction of looking, drivers looking up at um, this type of display along a, 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 a route such as Evergreen, which is heavily traveled our, our at different times? Our and there are children and people crossing the street going back and forth from the Civic Center to the restaurant. Um, looking up and being distracted, <coughs> who have you talked to regarding well, to public safety? Through, through the chair. The planning department has an internal review process that includes community policing, fire, engineering, uh, planning, landscape, parks, and we vet all of these projects. Uh, if, if we have the blessing of the council, we certainly will vet this through those departments starting tomorrow. But. Um, we, we thought that um, there was an incomplete presentation last week. There was some misunderstanding, and we wanted to have the opportunity to come back here and show you the real scale, the location, and logistically what we were talking about. And if we can move forward, we would vet out those, those questions, concerns. We have to contact Ms. Steve. There's, there's a series of procedures that we would have to go through. So let me ask this question again. Um, because this looking up and glancing, it only takes, we talked about this with signs, it only takes this long when you're distracted. You know, we talk about no texting, you know, um, cell phones, and, and, you know, things that you do in your car that take you away from what's in front of you. So I would, I would think that that would be a piece of any type of presentation, not after the fact, but before the fact to say, what, you know, what the public safety say about drivers looking over not just once, but 20 times as they're driving down a heavily traveled <coughs> road. And so uh, your response well, is that you have not Specifically uh, talked to them, but I'm, I'm cognizant as a planner for 25 years, uh, the spacing and the design and the layout are consistent with other projects. Um, this is meant to be viewed both as a pedestrian walking up and down the sidewalk and as a motorist, and hopefully to engage the motorist to pull over, get out of their car, and, and walk and engage. Mm -hmm. The Parks Department has a community walk scheduled for the mid part of June. They anticipate between 1,000 and 1,500 participants, and we're hoping that the route and, and the planning would, would encourage. Okay, so you haven't answered my question, and whether you've been a planner for 25 years or not, you've not answered that question. 
and then my um, um, third question. You said to um, take it down at the end of the month. That's what correct. Do you, what do you mean? Thirty days after April, June thirty, June thirtieth. That's correct. Approximately four weeks after that, they've been installed. Okay, so by July one. This Whatever that June? Saturday fourth, um, they're they're scheduled to be installed on June fourth. So four weeks after that, I, I believe is um, you know early July. Yeah. So for four weeks. Mm -hmm. And my third question is, who at the um, uh, the uh, Jewish schools did you, did you contact, and who I wrote spoke, back and said I that they would they were willing to have their children's pictures displayed on? Saturday. I spoke with Rabbi Eli Mayerfeld from Yeshiva Beth Yehuda mm -hmm. and Sydney Katz from Akiva Hebrew Day School. I spoke with them both personally this morning, Sorry, hold on. Hold on. and they both contacted me by phone and said that they were. Were, um, they said to specifically mention to the council that they want to be partners. They think this is a good idea and they would like to participate. They already have taken photos of their children on, on a previous um, project. And all that would need to be done is to get the parents' permission. Then they, the photos could be digitally submitted to the producer of these posters. But, and they were just two of many that we could incorporate into this project. And again, this was in response to some of the legitimate concerns about being inclusive in the entire community. Now we are only talking about 20 to 30 photos and we want to have a broad spectrum of, of children faces of Southfield. So that's, um, there, there may be others that will participate, but they were the first two to contact. I spoke know. with Southfield Christian as well today and I'm waiting, I'm waiting another email from their art teachers, the principal from the elementary school, and I have his name written down somewhere. He's going to be talking to his art teachers and get back to me um, later this week. He invited me to come and speak to their staff next week, and I told them I'd like to speak to them soon. Well, I'm glad to see that it's been scaled down. That that was one of my concerns, but I had a concern about just looking away and, you know, there has to be some safety, something in there about how long before that makes for a hazardous situation, especially considering the number of people during the summer that are walking back and forth in that area. And we'll be walking even more now. And and in your packet, there's just a sample of six to ten other student photos. And again, there's it's just um, it's just just a broad spectrum of of, of the children that we're um, featuring. It's okay. You done? Uh-huh, I'm Janet. Thank uh, you. Ms. Banks? Um, this is back off by Ms. Banks for Cassie this afternoon, um, and it's from Don. It says, after reviewing, and he asked that we read this into the minutes, please. After reviewing the agenda package this weekend, I noticed that the face-to-face -face art project was back on the agenda for discussion. This item was voted down by council at our last meeting. I would like to go on record as adamantly opposing this project. I also find it offensive that this item is being brought back to council after it was voted down. If, I, if it wasn't for my recent surgery, I would be in attendance at this meeting this evening. Councilman Dowell for Jackson. <coughs> Mr. Lance? No. <coughs> if you went to Akiva and Beth Yehuda, why aren't they here tonight to tell us that they're in favor of this, not the planning department? Well, Mr. Lance, through the chair, all, all I can say is I contacted them personally this morning and they both responded to me this afternoon. Did you invite them down here tonight? I did not. presentation? I sent them the, the packet that was handed out to you, and they're, they did were you aware of the I did not. I did here? not. Okay. On short notice, I did not. I spoke with them personally on the phone. Well, they should hear, be here in front of the council and listen to what we have to say, yes or no, but they should be here if they're part of the, the project. I, 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 I made them aware that was on the council tonight for further consideration. 
doctor. And I I think for the short period of time, if we wanted to do something like that, just to see how it's gonna work out, I, I, I wouldn't be I would not be opposed to that. I do understand the safety issue that was brought up by Councilwoman Garrison. and I I mean, I don't know without having that study how that would be impacted in this particular case. But you did what most of our concerns were uh, from the other night. I I think it's good. It's something we have to reach out and try to do it to be a part of the whole project. We're coming in on the ground level to be a part of the whole project with the community. We have businesses that have also that will be participating, if I'm understanding right. you correctly. And the, the schools, and now the uh, Christian, South of Christian and Bethlehem. So we'll have several schools, so this will be in different clusters throughout the city, which um, will give us that walkability that we were trying to do so you can move throughout the city. And I, I, I think that's pretty good. I, I mean, we have to introduce the art in small pieces, and it's got a, a time frame. It's not the entire summer. It's just for a short period of time, and we're going to see how it works out if this body uh, decides to go that way. I, my only other question is, do you have any idea of the cost that might be involved? Well, the um, City Center Advisory Board has pledged $5,000 towards the... Well, you realize that's tax money. You know that, don't it's you? It's special assessment because that's tax dollars that they vol believe voluntarily use support money in a project like this. Through the chair. Um, so the, the, the actual cost of the production of the posters is approximately $20. The school district is seeking supplies of material, the brushes and the paste to put the wallpaper up. The city center district has pledged $5,000 if the project is, is uh, constructed in, in this city district to support the additional cost of the the marine grade plywood and the posts and the bolts. <coughs> um, would, as far as the city of Southfield, there, there is some nominal time that is required by the Parks and Recreation and the Highway to assist in the installation of the framing. But the volunteers would be coming in on Saturday the 4th to actually put the, uh, put the uh, posters up on the boards. So uh, as far as any monetary cost, there is no monetary cost for the city, but there is some minimal labor costs to assist with, with um, making sure that it's properly installed. Okay, so there's no monetary cost. I thought Other than the hours, that's some support from the Parks Department. The monetary cost is being funded either through this project grant or outside sources, including the City Center Advisory Board. Because didn't you say the artist was contributing? Well, he's contributing the cost of the production of the posters. Oh, the posters. Yes, and the photographic um, technique and so forth. And, and he's sharing a part of that, part, the website as well. So he, he received approximately $100,000, and he is sharing portions of that with many other communities. My understanding is throughout the country, we were lucky enough to be one of the ones in the world. One of these, these ladies here wrote the grant and received um, to be part of this project. That just puts a face and a big name behind our project. Whether you know whether he supported it or not, this at least he's a well-known artist with worldwide exposure, and we think that that positive press can be brought here to the city of Southfield once once we start promoting this and word starts getting out about this unique project. Just think about the Plymouth Ice Festival. Think about the art fair in Ann Arbor. Think about the art project in Grand Rapids. And, we, and I firmly believe that this could be the genesis of something that large for the city of Southfield in the future. Maybe not in year one, but I, I think this is so unique that it's going to just create a positive buzz for our city. <coughs> and how, how can you not look at those young children and see our future? And it's a, it's a unique take. It's, it's a different form of art. But it, it's a unique take, and I, I think if it's done right, and there's some synergy with this, this could be just a fantastic project for our city. And I think this gentleman here mentioned about people coming to our community for the first time, the businesses who, who, who fail to venture out, coming out during lunchtime and spending their dollars at our gas station and at our you know restaurants and 
encouraging their families to come back on the weekends. Uh, think about the 2,500 people that come to the library every day and the 300,000 people that pass through the pavilion on a yearly basis um, to get them to capture and, and take a second look at, at Southfield instead of just driving here, getting in their car, and then driving home. I think this project has that potential. And that's why I'm passionate about it, and that's why I'm supporting on behalf of the city center that the city seriously considers partnering on this project. Thank you. Ms. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I hardly know where to start. Um, I, first of all, I'm going to share with uh, the council some comments that I've had from the public, um, from members of the public since the uh, first town meeting. And one of them that I thought, <coughs> that I thought really was um, more likely to, to be the reaction of people is that this looks like a memorial. Somebody driving down Evergreen is going to see pictures and say, there's no, there's no dialogue, there's no explanation. You're gonna, the first thought was, this is, are these the children that were killed this year? That actually has been said to me. And I thought, you know, that could very well, that could very well be what people assume. I mean, you can, you can do all kinds of press that you want, but some people are going to think that. I agree that it's going to be a serious traffic hazard. I think. People aren't going to get out of their cars and park on the street because they can't park there. They're not going to stop, park their cars, and walk down there if they're driving through. It is going to be a distraction. Um, one of the other things that was said to me by members of the community is that they we have tried to the knowledge and through all you know people always say, well, the schools in the city are the same, the government because they get this one tax bill, and. There have been people, especially during the village um, um, effort on the part of a lot of community people who are working on behalf of it, trying to <coughs> express to the community that the school government and the city government are separate. And this comment was made to me, this is going to make it look like that there's a real partnership or relationship beyond what is, <coughs> beyond a friendly relationship but that the schools and the city really are uh, one and that the schools are going to call for their millage and this, they thought this, this was just making a mockery of the whole thing. This is not my view. This is what I'm sharing with you. Um, it does set a precedent for the Civic Green and Terry, although you say we've had many displays here, the Flower Day is not a display. We have events here. We have daily events. We've had a couple of art shows in the past. We had the Chaldean Festival, we had the Jazz Fest. These are event, community events which a lot of people come here because we have this large space. But we don't and have never, that I can recall, had any kind of just a regular display such as this that is nothing except, you know, mm -hmm. um, just there for a display. Beyond, well, we haven't. I mean, they've been, they've been events. And they've been one day or a couple days. Um, I, I don't feel that this is very inclusive because you mentioned the Orthodox community has been invited, but we have Chaldeans, we have Armenians, we have Koreans, we have Asian people that have businesses here, that have churches here, that have community centers here. And what about the, the members of the Muslim community who send their children to school in Dearborn? I mean, we're not, it is not being inclusive. It's really not representative of all the people and I think it has to represent the people that are in part of the business community here. So can I answer that? No, let me finish. Okay. Um, you can answer this later. I I think it's um, the buzz that you think it's going to create <coughs> could very well be a negative one. I for the life of me, and I've been trying to see how this would. This isn't going to rival the Plymouth Art Show, the Plymouth Ice Show. It's not going to rival those things. I mean, there's there's just no way. Um, I. You can call it art, but just taking a picture of somebody and putting a lot of pictures on display doesn't qualify as art by any professional standard. Uh, it's a photographic display. Nothing wrong with that, but it is a photographic display. And to say that we suddenly encourage art displays, I, we, I, I disagree with that. But I'm more concerned about the fact that it's, it's, um, it is a traffic hazard. We've, had, we've never used the Civic Green without having a unanimous uh, council. We've been very, very careful about how we use the Civic Green. 
and if we're going to set up to, you know, display, there's so many implications in what you say about all these things that haven't been considered and haven't been brought to us that you're sure you can solve all these problems. I think it's, I think it's not going to get the buzz that you think. I just, I totally disagree with that. I, I don't feel that I can support this because for several reasons. I think it is a traffic hazard. Um, it doesn't include everybody. I, I just don't feel it's appropriate, and I'm, I'm not supporting it. <coughs> Mr. Lance? Yeah, in reference to the donation from the city center committee, uh, I think it's a legal question. Too. They they get that money from the millage from us, don't they? No, it's a special assessment based on oh, square footage. I mean a special footage. assessment, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's taxpayers' money. It's actually, the, but th it's the business owners themselves who pay that millage. I'm sorry, who pay that special assessment. So it's, okay. it's, it's, it, it's there, and all the businesses, based on the square foot of the structures that they own, pay. It's still, it's still public money. Well, no, it, goes, it, it belongs to that entity by statute. Right. I know that. I know that. But can they spend it any way they want? Well, it, there's a statutory uh, formula in terms of what can be done, but I assume this would fall into some That's kind right. of public relations. Special program, yeah. just like they're supporting the, right. uh, the walk. The community sure. walk at the parks department. Sure, they have they have pretty broad discretion on something that would okay. enhance the district. Yeah, it has and to be spent within the district boundaries. Well, so why are okay. they down here? If they're donating the money to see what they're donating. It to. They've already seen this presentation. Huh? They've already seen this presentation. Let them come down and see the council and then the, the presentation also. Okay. See where. Yeah, I just want to say that I, I'm, I think this should be on school property. If the city center board wants to do it over there in their area, I don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem with it being on the front lawn of, in front of civic, uh, in front of this facility. And I think we, I do think the appropriate <coughs> by the schools. I don't have a problem with it being set up so that people can walk by and see it. But what's wrong with having it? What's wrong with having it? City kind of people want it, let them have it over there. I just don't feel it's appropriate. It's just a precedent here for something that we've never done before, and we're very careful about that. And I don't want to set a precedent that everybody starts coming in with these different ideas. But apart from that, I, just, I think I said all my objections. I just I think it's not inclusive enough, and I don't want it on the um, yard of the uh, Pacific Center. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Garrison? Well, you know, I think that the city of South Hill and the school district, that we should work more collaboratively together. I always believe that, though we are two distinct entities, what um, impacts one impacts the other, and how we support each other. We're even scheduled to meet with the school district in June to talk about how we can work together more collaboratively. So I, I think that the city taking an interest or supporting a project of our public school system um, that also extends itself to the private schools in the city, um, I think that, that's good. I think that is a sense of community. I think it's a sense of community. I don't know that I like the idea of, the, of, of, and I think that this is art, and so I don't have any issue with that. Art is in the eyes of the beholder, and so um, that's it for, for me with that. I'm a little concerned, however, that the way we're trying to get the attention is from people driving, not just of Evergreen, but in other businesses. I, I, I would not want this on Telegraph where businesses on Telegraph have this type of art display where pe motorists are looking up at art. I, I, I just think um, it, it's, it's, it's um, they we're just asking for problems here. Um, and I can't believe that you've come here without something to support that issue that 
allowing businesses across the city to put up, or even on Southfield Road. You know, I can't imagine coming up Southfield Road right there 11 miles if there is another thing out there to distract a motorist versus the five lanes that people are already crossing over to turn left, which is already uh, uh, accidents waiting to happen and accidents that, that happen all the time. I can't imagine having pictures of our youth. Ms. Garrison, can I, can I just correct yes. one thing? It is proposed to go throughout the city on school property, but to only be located within the city center district as far as businesses are concerned. And we wanted to partner. And so the center city. city district would be what boundary? It's 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 roughly Evergreen Road, Northwestern Highway between 10 and 11 miles. There's a triangle that's about a half a mile square. Right. Okay. Well, I, I think it's inappropriate with the speed going down that Northwestern Highway. I, I, I think this is just, that that's not the place where you want drivers looking up trying to see pictures. And, and again, I don't, there's nothing specifically proposed for that. That's the okay. boundaries of the district. Well, that, that's, um, I don't think that's appropriate. I think that it is appropriate to have the children's pictures displayed somewhere on, um, on city property but I don't know that the place for it is on, on the side of, of our street. Um, <coughs> and I, was, I had always thought, what about across the street right there and have that lot, you know, put up something and let people park while, you know, while they're eating at the that's restaurant that's an and walk plan. over and walk around and see something going on. I think it's exciting. Um, and, you know, I was the, uh, when I was growing up, I'm from Belleville. I was in elementary school. I was the only black girl in the school. Yeah, my picture showed up whenever it was convenient to show racial diversity. And it was wrong because it, it put me out there and tried to portray me as something that wasn't accurate. So I hope that we're not looking here to find the only, it's the, our school district is 98% or help me with this. Um, African American or 95 percent or something. I hope we are not finding the only Asian child or the only white child in the class and putting it up trying to say, oh yes, this is how diverse we are because we're not diverse like that. But if we're saying that our city is diverse, which is where the, the city comes in, it is diverse. We do have diversity in the city. So if it shows our youth, so that piece of it. Well, on, on city right. property, we would use the latest census to give a broad perspective proportionally what was fair and reasonable about our ethnic diversity in the community. Within the community. Which is 75% okay. African American, and I could break it all the way down to slivers of people, but right. we don't plan to do that. And the um, okay. Yeshiva Beth Yehuda, the Kiva Hebrew Day School, and the Christian is just a sampling of us outreaching. We're not going to disclude anybody, and if we can find more partners between now and June 4th, right. we certainly will Right. embrace and encourage them to participate. Okay, and I and I find it very hard to believe that without a presentation or without a school um, at Akiva or whatever other school, without this coming to their board, that there is any one person who has the authority to <coughs> say, yes, we'll be a part of this, without going to, a, to their board or whomever, the decision-making body. Um, I find that hard to believe that anybody would say, yes, go ahead, and we can count on that. Um, because we wouldn't do it here. There's nobody here, a city elected official, that could say, yes, we'll be a part of it. It takes the, the board to approve it. So, bottom line, well, unless I hear something else that persuades me differently, I'd like to see it somewhere, but I don't think it belongs on, on Evergreen. This is a smaller track, but I think it belongs someplace where and, and we PR it, you know, and, and make it uh, part of this strip. I think it really belongs across the street. Um, and I think it will have the excitement, but you have to park to get out to see it. And that, that's but I think it's one, the the right one of the concepts to our community that we embrace our children. And we remove, and beyond that, we embrace our teachers and our educators. Um, 
and that we should be working together, not working separately, or how that, heck, there's no reason to have a meeting <laughs> June 8th with the school district. June 6th. Then there's no reason to have that meeting if we're not talking about how we can help each other. Um, so, I won't support it on Evergreen because you haven't given me any information of how hazards. So I will not support that. But I would support it somewhere right up in this area. I think it would boost the area. I don't. I'm not looking for international attention. I think right here in Michigan, sometimes we need to stay a little under the radar. You know, we're a business community, and we do things for business and. And, but I'm not looking to get international attention or even national attention. I don't think it's in our best, it's best for the city at this time with the politics that are going on. But I, I, I would support it across the street we have in that a plan area. B. We have a plan B to go across the street. I would the support that so because desires. I think that would be There's, there's sidewalks, people can park, can park. We, can, we can locate, we can, we can, Install 20 to 30 of them along the sidewalk and in L shape. People would have to drive on the up. public sidewalk. Inside. Mr. Blanche, yes, Gloria. I would support, and I would encourage other people in our city. I think we should have some events, and I think Evergreen is where which the city has talked about developing. Um, I would support that. Is it inside Evergreen or the Central Park Boulevard? I'm sorry, it's inside um, that where the building used to be. That's uh, the Pomeroy site. Right. Yeah. I would support something over there. Parks Department does have an agreement right. for special events because on that I property. Think it enhances the walkability of this area um, and the, the whole culture of some place to go in South Hill Street. But I will not support it on everything because we haven't not, we've not brought forth anything that talks about disruption. And I don't want anybody to hit going across the street, and I've been, I've been at the corner, um, on a bike, at the corner of <coughs> and 696, I was on a bike, and another kid was on a bike and crossed that street and got hit, just like that, right in front of me. Police were there, two minutes, but he got hit just like that. Um, and so I saw that young man on the ground, um, so I would not support it, it's just too heavily traveled, too heavily traveled.
quote unquote, live in Southfield or at least attend, go to the Southfield Library, see the young people of Southfield uh, as an as an alternative. Because if they put it on school property, unless they put it along the traveled portions, you know, behind the sidewalks of, of school properties, it's going to be those folks that either bring their kids to school or drop their kids off. So <coughs> it'll be sort of a captive audience in that situation. So for the, out of the shoot, maybe we don't try to hit a home run, but we and because you're a baseball player. Uh, we don't. Uh, I'll take a, a double any day. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, especially if there's somebody on third, right? Uh, uh, maybe if we find that there's a uh, liking to it, especially if the, the city center is going to allow it along uh, city center boulevard, Central Park, or Central Park mm -hmm. boulevard. Uh, you know that. Uh, I think those that might, that might be something to be feasible. considered. I think both suggestions are feasible. Okay. Um, Mr. Lance? Uh, you mentioned Civic Central Drive, Central Drive. That's a public roadway. You're going to have the same problem there. It's going to come out of the office building and you speed up on Central Drive there. Central Park Boulevard. Central Parkway. Well, again, it would, based on getting support from the police department, traffic engineering, and so forth. So you got to go to them first. That's correct. Not after. That's correct. Again, this this is an educational. Get get some feedback here. Um, time is running short. However, um, I I still think it's you know worth consideration. And as Mr. Fraser had indicated, the school district would benefit with their parents and their children, but the visibility for the city would be limited by having it in a public space and partnering. We, we, we get more positive exposure that way, and that's why we're bringing it forward for your consideration. I certainly um, I know that the school district will go forward with, with their project and have success. And um, again, my, my, my city center advisory board was very excited about partnering and, and wanted to participate. You still have a floor, right? Uh, again, coming to the Bethy Hooter or Kiva or some of the others, they should be down here just like uh, the others are. And their board should give permission, not the individual or director there. I don't buy that. Well, Mr. Lance, just in, short, in, in, in the short time from making the co initial contact on Friday to today, I was very happy that I got a positive response. And they, uh, obviously, they would have to have their board support this to go forward officially. But since since we only have uh, two and a half weeks, um, at least there was some positive feedback that, yes, they would support this with their boards and commissions, and we need to have sign-off from the parents. But there, the photos have been taken. They were used at another display, and they're readily available to participate in this project. And, and there are other schools that uh, will be contacted over the next couple of days, and we hope to have a favorable response as well. Well, as soon as everybody gets through talking. <laughs> you done? Yeah. Okay. okay. Ms. Zemar? Um, I, I know that Central Park Boulevard is heavily traveled. Um, because of the people that work in the town center. I think putting it across the street on that vacant spot um, isn't a bad idea. I don't want to see it right up by the walk where people that drive by have to look over because you, you're going to look over. You can't help it. I don't, I don't want to encourage that. But if they want to display it in there and those people are, you know, that whole median area, which, yep. which is appropriate for that, they want to do that, um, I don't. It's I don't think that's such a problematic in terms of. <coughs> uh, I would still like to have some department input on that. Um, I don't also. Uh, my, my main concern. I mean, I am concerned about having a long Road. There's no question about that. But uh, right up on, you know, where I said what I wanted to say about the city, the civic center. I think they could also have it 
on the city's center court um, on their property, off the sidewalk, but on their property. <coughs> but again, it's, so, it's, it's a very busy road when you're traffic going, leaving the office and you're going towards the freeway. There's, there's really traffic. I've been in an accident there because somebody <laughs> made a, a turn on, against the lights going to work in a hurry. And uh, I was in the right way and I was seeing it. Yeah. Plan B, short of putting on an evergreen, was to work with the interior of the property. There is an existing interior sidewalk system, and that we, we would place them along the interior. This would provide access and parking on the site, and wouldn't, wouldn't be as much of a distraction from motorists. So people could actually come in and park and get out of their car and walk. So it <coughs> wouldn't be right there as you... This is, yeah. this is one that location. Would be, that would be... And, and then um, a possible second location could I be. Wouldn't, I wouldn't put it right the but, but these yeah. these were <coughs> all different options right. that we investigated. But I'm just saying for traffic safety, I wouldn't put it right at the intersection. Sure. I'd put it sure. on the other side. Ms. Garrison? Uh, I was just wondering that we thought about any of our parks. <coughs> You know, Inglewood is a walking park, and it's huge. Um, it has uh, a lot of people who go there all the time. I was just wondering, have we thought about, you know, PRing it, that this is uh, supporting our youth and our schools and cities, and as we if we do some other places, also an opportunity at some of our parks um, to put up, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight pictures, um, because it's... Uh, we haven't secured additional funding for for areas outside the city center at this time. And given the time constraints, <coughs> we're concerned about spreading <coughs> too thin. We're, we're taking about 25% of all the photos, and, and the school district would be putting up the remainders. Okay. Um, just a thought. Yeah, but That's we good. wanted to have it in our center okay. of it all, our center of our center of it all. <coughs>
that, that because that was one of the things that again I'd be just happy to have a starting point right right and it's not me personally but on behalf of the city and on behalf of the city center right no and I, I'm not saying for you personally and that's why I was asking for the business because even though it's there on that corner the other businesses are around there so you could still have it in more than one location mm -hmm. and still make it walkable right that's all I was trying to Yeah, just a uh, uh, follow-up to Ms. Taylor's comment about the other businesses. All the businesses that he named are part of the city center advisory board. They're all members of that group. Okay. That's all of them. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, let me uh, see if I can wrap this up. Uh, make some comments. One of the things that uh, we all know, we because we've been exposed to this over a period of uh, time since our new governor has been elected is that he feels very strongly about uh, organizations cooperating with each other, uh, local governments cooperating with each other, and he's even part of his program is to fund those organizations, those governments that show that they're willing to partner with other governments. The school district is another government even though when the taxpayers write a, a check to pay the taxes, they pay it to the city of Southfield. We happen to only be the collector of the, the funds and we divide them up. But this is a project that uh, would show that we can cooperate with another entity, which is the school. The other thing is uh, with the uh, thrust of the Michigan Municipal League, uh, they've done a, an awful lot of study about how to <coughs> keep young people from moving away from communities, and how to get people to come back home after they have left the community, and that is to give them something that they can identify with. Um, around the table I've heard we've never done this before, and that's true. We never have done it before, but does that mean that we can't do it now? Uh, there's a lot of things we've never done before. At one time, we never had fireworks. And, but then we did have fireworks, and we found out that it worked. And now we don't have fireworks because we can't afford to have fireworks at this time, but I'm looking forward to the day when we can have fireworks again. So the fact that we haven't done this before ought not to be, as far as I'm concerned, an impediment of going ahead and doing this, uh, this project if we can do it safely and with good <coughs> uh, We do talk about the Southfield standard, and I'm presuming that the committee that's working together will come up with a program that will adhere to what we consider a high standard for displays. Will that open the door for anybody else that wants to come in and, and say, okay, you put your, your photos up there, now I get to put mine up there. Well, we'll deal with those as they come along. And maybe we will, and maybe we won't. And maybe this will be the beginning of an art type display that's similar to how Grand Rapids has evolved. That uh, started small, and now it's it's an attraction that people plan their vacations around. It's uh, probably not quite <coughs> as large as the Holland Tulip Festival, but uh, the Holland Tulip Festival has been going on for almost 100 years, so I guess what I'm suggesting is that we're going to go around the table and we're going to do a consensus, which is a, a sort of a vote, to find out if, if we can do it in a safe manner, in a, and apparently along Evergreen Road is not, you know, if you had <coughs> going along Evergreen Road, I think you probably have already know what the outcome is going to be. As I said, yes. just to shorten the discussion, I, I think uh, we can make it work across the street. Okay. So, uh, and as far as, as I'm concerned, the decision that we're making here is, do we want to participate in this project? But actually, our control really is, do we want it on the front lawn? What happens across the street I don't think that we have an awful lot of say in it, but our ordinances will have 
quite a bit of sand. Can I clarify one thing? Yes. If you go to the lot that we have the easement, yes. that's okay. that is an easement that's granted to the okay. city. So okay. you do have some Okay, on that one piece, yeah. but yeah. the rest the rest of it uh, yeah. would be controlled by their, the city center board and our ordinances. We wouldn't allow them to do something that would violate our ordinances. That's correct. So I guess the consensus is uh, along Evergreen Road, which is off the table now, okay, and the rest of it is the lot that we <coughs> have easement to across the street, and then the rest of it is up to the schools and the city center board. That's correct. Okay. Thank you very so much for so your with time. What, uh, we haven't. I know. With, okay. I appreciate so, it. So, I'm just kind of trying to crystallize what we're going to we're going to do a consensus on. That is a lot across the corner. That's really the sum and substance of do we want to participate in it? And if we participate in it, it will be on the lot across the corner. The rest of it is up to the schools and the city center. Uh, and the individual business. Yes. For their property, right? For their property. Right. Ms. Gears. I have a question with that um, as far as our ordinances. Because I don't think also, for example, in front of, say, a South Hill Lake Road, I don't think the, the pictures should be displayed right along 12 Mile. We don't have anything to say about South Well, I don't know that we don't have anything to say. Because that's a different say. city. No, South Hill? South Hill Lake Road. There's a different oh. city. Okay, well, forget that okay. one. Let's take another school. Okay. How about South Hill High, mm -hmm. where we've had, um, you know, we've had deaths, uh, you know, a death of a child, you know, crossing the street there. I think we do have something to say <coughs> if the school or the business decides to put uh, this artwork up where it is uh, impacting the traffic. I think we do have something to say. I think our ordinance is that we have an obligation to keep our city safe from things that could happen. So I'm not sure what you're saying that I agree with that unless there is no ordinance that talks about um, uh, distractions along the roadways, or something about safety, because we don't need we don't need we don't need not, not one person injured because of this. We do not need that. I don't think I've ever even suggested that we could <laughs> no. sacrifice even one. You person. You never suggested it. And but I, I said I, our, right. our ordinances ought to control how the signs are put up along the roadways. Right. That's what they're there for. Through the chair. Yes. And it's not a sign, but so, we have co we have clear vision views. We have safety things that That's can't right. be obstructed, and they have the, to be followed. The police, the the ordinances, the committee should make that decision. If if we're sitting here projecting what's going to happen if we do this or do that, it's mere projection. If you study it and say if we do this, what's likely to happen? At the committee level, I'm going to be happy. <coughs> Everybody else around the table can can put their consensus in however they feel comfortable with that. Uh, Mayor, I just would like to do a friendly offering here. Um, any plan that you have for exhibit is signed off by the police and being meeting our safety code, and if that happens. Would this council be in agreement of their being placed? So if, if the safety issue, instead of 100 feet apart, it has to be 200 feet apart, would this body be in favor of that? Because I think it is a, and I'll just say this, that we want safety. Uh, if we do embrace this, which I think we should, that it is a sign of fire police, which we've heard, so that it does comply with that.
department or the person that's in charge of that ought to have input with the police department because you could be having visibility issues. And I do think that's a consideration. And Gloucester Road is a very busy street, very, very busy, a lot of traffic. So if, if a sign couldn't go there of that size and shape, then this picture shouldn't go there because it would have the same effect of being a hazard. And that I would like to add that to their to the safety issue because that's what they do. And that's one of their, you know, it's more than just uh, is it aesthetically okay to sign. It has a lot to do with safety. So I think that has to take, you know, you can't put signs up with them. There's so many skills you know, at the intersection. So I, do, I think that has to be a part of the, the um, consideration. It's a major part of it. As I said, the issue should be whether this body would embrace this within the guidelines of the police saying it's safe here and it's placed so that it will not be a deterrent. We do political signs, we do advertisements for the flower show, for everything else we expect people to read. Um, I mean, we do put advertisement and words around. There's no reading of these. There's no words on it. There's no pictures. <coughs> so we must adhere to safety. And so if we follow that guideline, it should be something we should be able to do wherever we put it. It has to go with the sign. Ms. Garrison? Um, you know, I don't support what the mayor has suggested because what that does is opens it right back up to. So I don't support, support that. I think that you don't um, support what? what she suggested that wherever it is determined that it is not a, a safety hazard by the police, that the um, artwork can go out. I don't support that. I, I support <coughs> more of what we just talked about. Let's try it right here across the street. Let's try that this year. <coughs> today is, what's the date today? May 16th. 16th. We're talking in two weeks. Um, this is going to go up, and I su I support the cross street. I don't support uh, what the mayor has suggested. To be clear, when I said you brought up the school issue, that you didn't support it being on school property by the a school street. The schools have the right to put this exhibit on their property. However, you said there's still a concern about safety, and so that when the schools put it on their property and it's on the main street, then it should adhere to make sure, even though they have the right to put on their property, that is adhering to a safety guideline that our police say. So I wasn't in disagreement with you. But we cannot tell the schools you cannot put this exhibit on your property. We cannot do We that. didn't say that. We said that wherever it is, it has to be. Agree. I don't agree with the other, <coughs> because that opens it up not just to the schools, that opens it right back up to Evergreen, where we sat here and we talked about we didn't think that was the place. I said if it goes to the um, school, I didn't say, but using what you just said, that if it goes to the school, yes, it is their property, but the we have a controlling piece uh, regarding our ordinances and keeping this, the, the city safe. Ms. So that I'm piece, not I don't. But we're not, we're not saying the same thing, uh, Mayor. I think you're both saying the same thing myself. No, I'm, as, a, no, as an observer. Well, it's, no. I don't think so. <coughs> let, me, let me take my statement back. Okay. It's off the case. It doesn't exist. All right. So, as I tried to say that the display will go up once the committee determines that it can be done safely and within uh, a professional standard or a standard that, that the South Field wants to maintain. So, Pardon me? Well, of course it meets our ordinance. Um, and because the police will be involved in it, they will have to say whoever's on a, on a committee committee has to make to put the plan together. And that's what's on the table. As far as the city is concerned, the, the, the uh, displays on city property will be limited to the on the right side of the street. Mm -hmm. So the rest of it has to be controlled by ordinances and common sense. Right. Now, if we haven't completely tied your hands, we're going to do a consensus around the table. Mr. Taylor? Yes. 
Ms. Garrison? Yes. Yeah. Is it Mr. Lance? Yes. What you said, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Seymour? And I say yes. Again, thank you very much for your time. And Godspeed. Yes. Yeah.